One of the biggest questions that Star Wars fans have about the prequel trilogy is why after episode 1, are Anakin's mechanical and engineering skills never really developed or explored ever again? There are certainly a handful of occasions where his affinity for fixing things is on full display. In episode 2 after killing the Tuscans, he says to Padme, Life seems so much simpler when you're fixing things. I'm good at fixing things. It was as if his default modus operandi, and personal therapy in this case, is fixing things. Having grown up in a junk shop, it's still a major part of his character. In the Clone Wars Rise of Clovis arc, we see his workshop station in his room, so it did stay a part of him. Even later as Darth Vader, he personally modified his advanced TIE Fighter, as well as repairing droids, and customizing his lightsaber. His younger self passions stayed with him. But why didn't the Jedi Order encourage this? While well, some new information from the High Republic, 200 years before Anakin, has just shed some light on this, and even accidentally retcons the reason Anakin had an affinity for such things, as well as the big reason he was able to so easily build C-3PO. It wasn't just skill, it was a force power. C-3PO's backstory and connection to young Anakin was first established in The Phantom Menace, but a new force ability introduced with a different character earlier in the timeline in the High Republic has just given us a bit of additional canon information of how Anakin was able to build the protocol droid. There is a misconception among Star Wars fans that it was only during the writing of the prequel trilogy that George Lucas decided to connect C-3PO's story to young Anakin. After all, 3PO was built by Annie to help his mum Shmi with chores and communication. We have to remember that his primary function as a protocol droid was translation and etiquette. Anakin dreamed that one day, with C-3PO as his faithful travelling companion, he and his mother would be able to venture anywhere in the galaxy and be understood and be able to understand the natives, wherever they went, whatever the language. However, did you know Lucas had planned out this connection back in 1977? After A New Hope had released, Lucas began developing ideas for the second Star Wars movie, Episode 5. Some of these ideas wouldn't manifest until he made the prequel trilogy, but his focus was world building, and in conversations with Carol Teitelman, Lucasfilm's director of publications at the time, he decided to put emphasis on the character of C-3PO and his history in the Star Wars saga emphasizing that both 3PO and R2-D2 made up the core and heart of the Star Wars franchise. And in the recorded conversation, here's what Lucas said while role-playing as the protocol droid. I'm about 112 years old and I've had about 43 masters. I was made in the robotic factory on the planet Afa. Before I was assigned to the court of Alderaan, I was in one of the sub-embassies in the Granica system. I was working in the embassy for one of the third liaison officers at that time. That's why I really started out. It was a good 37 years before I was actually transferred into protocol. When I started in the embassy, I was one of 1200 interpreter droids. I was in the Outland area and there were a lot of strange planets being amassed into the Republic. There was actually a very high attrition rate out there too, because of the strange climates. Many of the droids would fall apart very rapidly. And here's the important bit, I was lucky to be totally reassembled by a young boy, working for a junk dealer. After several years, I gained new coverings and became good as new. Now evidently some of these early notes did change, and understandably, much of the canon backstory of C-3PO changed too, but back in 1977, Lucas knew Anakin was the one who rebuilt C-3PO. And so during the making of The Phantom Menace, George Lucas said, he always imagined young Anakin as being extremely talented in mechanics and robotics. His skills came from working as a slave for Watto, and before we meet him in episode 1, Anakin had access to a variety of droid parts and other mechanical components on Tatooine. This hands-on experience helped him to develop a deep understanding of how machines and droids work. But just like for his pod racing skills, his high midichlorian count and connection to the Force were big contributing factors for this talent. But George never expanded on this, aside from what's revealed in the film. Though Anakin at the time wasn't really aware of his connection to the Force, it certainly influenced his abilities. This is something George stood by. Being the Chosen One, Anakin's mechanical prowess was enhanced, allowing him to intuitively understand how things worked. But now, my dear friends, Disney has changed things a bit. They've added some more context by rendering Jedi's abilities with mechanics a specific and unique Force power all unto itself. 
it's been introduced in the High Republic. One of the new Disney canon force powers is Jedi Technical Insight. Although it was acknowledged in the Lucas days, it's now an actual thing. The power was subtle and easy to miss, but was more prominent in the days of the High Republic, and the character it's been applied to is Padawan Ram Drummaram. He's made numerous appearances throughout the books. He exhibits an increased technical insight, powered by the Force. These skills included the ability to intuitively understand technology, as well as the ins and outs of circuitry, and they've used this to explain how Anakin was an exceptional child. And not just because he learned from Watto working at the junk shop. We know he was extraordinarily strong with the Force, and it's mentioned by Qui-Gon and Shmi, but it's not until this new canon edition that Lucasfilm acknowledges Anakin being able to find certain parts to rebuild C-3PO was a product of Force sensitivity and a very unique Force ability that Jedi 200 years before the film were using on a regular basis. Obviously his training under Watto helped, but even in the early episode 1 time material, Anakin's ability to find photoreceptors and servo motors and know what to do with them to make a functioning protocol droid at such a young age is made a big deal, which it was. Although to audiences in 1999, some fans still found it strange he was able to build a protocol droid despite living such an insular life. It would have required an incredible amount of skill for anyone, let alone a child, but it was particularly unusual because Anakin had access to very limited resources. He and his mother were enslaved to water at the time and weren't able to live on very much. But it does make sense that his ability was linked to the Force, and it further explains his abilities to build a pod racer. Skywalker was the only human to finish a pod race, let alone win one, which was reflective of George Lucas's vision for how he wanted to portray the young boy's abilities in the Force. I guess we just didn't know how this would affect the building of C-3PO. On screen, Anakin's passion for and prowess with technology seems to fizzle out after episode 1. He goes from a child on Tatooine constantly tinkering with and fixing technology, to a Padawan more focused on conventional use of the Force. And something which strongly contributes to this is how the Republic changed and the priorities of the Jedi during that time, compared to the High Republic, where the focus was exploration, experimentation, and expanding one's knowledge. By the time of the prequel trilogy, the Jedi were already immersed in politics and well on their way to war. There simply wasn't the opportunity for Anakin to develop and practice his technological skills. That doesn't mean Anakin entirely did away with his unique force ability though. He altered his lightsaber, made upgrades to his cybernetic hand, and made his red lightsaber as Darth Vader, dual phase. We know Lucasfilm under Disney have made some pretty strange decisions but their approach to retconning and adding context has been multifaceted. Their strategy aims to both respect the original trilogy and prequels, but also expand the universe with new narratives, sometimes going back to these stories and adding details to make it more coherent with their stories like The High Republic. They went back and did this with the Phantom Menace 25th Anniversary comics, filling in the gaps. In a lot of instances, it's been a good addition, in others, pointless. In this case, I would say it makes sense because we already know, through Shmi's words, Anakin demonstrated acuity for Force abilities since he was born. Premonition, Force dreams, his pod racing skills, and in this instance, building C-3PO. It's subtle, but important. Share your thoughts on this in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, check me out on socials, at StarWarsMeg1 on Twitter, and I've also linked my Patreon down below if you want access to videos not found here on YouTube. But until the next one, my dear friends, may the Force be with you, always.